In today's video we are going to be talking about things to look for when designing a garden or a flower bed. We are going to talk about things like physical structures in the garden, plant structure, colors and height and much more. Hi guys, I'm Chantal from PeacefulLivingNH.com. I talk about gluten-free, from scratch gluten-free cooking, gardening and self-sufficiency, helping you discover the beauty of life. So the first thing we're going to talk about is structure in the garden. Uh, so that would be things that are either already existing or things that you would want to add to your garden. Like for example, that could be a fence, um, a beautiful tree, um, a bench, a beautiful pot or like um, a statue or something like that or a fountain, anything that kind of adds um, uh, structure to the garden or maybe a walkway. So for example in the area that I'm designing, if you have uh, watched my video, the previous video that I put up on how to um, ten, top, 10 top top 10 tips for how to plant a flower bed, a flower garden. Uh, I'll be leaving the link in the description box below and I'll also be leaving the link for that video at the end of this video. In the apiary where I'm designing a flower bed in there, I have two flower beds that I need to design, but one of them that I'm currently designing, I have some structures in mind that I would like to implement in there um, and on the opposite side as well, along with there's already existing structure in there. For example, there's a pathway. As soon as you enter the apiary, uh, you see a pathway that's lined with uh, some pieces of cedar block and just uh, like uh, branches from trees. And this is what I had on hand. It's kind of make, makes it a little whimsical. And also there's a fence around it around the apiary area. Granted, that fence is not necessarily something that I would like, but um, it is there and I have to build around it. <laughs> and we use it to protect our bees. We electrify the fence so that bears don't can't come in and other animals and um, kill the bees. Another thing, like for example, what I would like to add in there also other than a bench is a bird bath maybe or a water fountain. Um, on the side that I'm designing currently. The bench would be on the opposite side. Um, and um, also one day eventually I would like to add an arbor so that when you are entering the, that area you are immediately greeted <laughs> by the arbor with something flowering climbing on it. I'm not sure what it's going to be yet but it's going to be beautiful. <laughs> I'm sure of that. <laughs> Um, and if I don't like it, I'll, if I don't like what I planted there, I'll always change it. You know, gardens are always a uh, a work in progress. It's it, you, you're never done with gardening, so just have fun with it. That's I think that's the number one rule when you're designing a garden <laughs> or gardening in general. Have fun with it. Um, so on the opposite side of that, I would like to add a bench so that um, kind of uh, it gives me a place to sit and enjoy that area because the, the apiary, um, the garden in the apiary is a boggy um, area and uh, a lot of the plants that um, I had to choose because of the way how the, uh, the situation of the area is because of the moisture level and the sunlight and all that, a lot of them attract pollinators and butterflies and hummingbirds a lot of these plants. So I would like to sit <laughs> on the opposite side and uh, enjoy the scenery. So that's why I would like to have a bench in there. I, I would like to add a walkway in the area where I am designing currently um, that would lead directly to the um, water, to the bird bath, and that would be something maybe like uh, stepping stones or something like that. Um, I might make a pathway in there also around the flower bed just to kind of allow me to go around um, but we will talk a little more about that in another point. The second thing that I want to talk about is a focal point. So in a garden you want to have something that draws your attention. Um, in a, the apiary for me that's going to be the uh, bird bath uh, or whatever I end up adding in there, but something that is beautiful and that uh, just immediately, as soon as you walk in there, draws the attention to your eye um, 
and that would be your focal point basically. Um, so it could be a tree, um, it could be really anything that has the power to draw your attention to it. And the importance of having a focal point uh, is uh, because you don't want to just like, um, so you don't want the garden to kind of like um, blend in all together and kind of disappear, um, like all, all the things that are in there. You don't want them to just sort of disappear. You want that thing to draw your eyes so that you can slowly start focusing on all the things that are around it. So you have a first thing that draws your eyes and then you just slowly start looking at the other things around it. So that could be again something like a tree, a fountain, a chair, um, a pot with plants, a statue, uh, or anything that draws your eyes to it. So again, that's the same thing that's similar to a structure, but not necessarily the that, but that in itself is not structure alone. Structure, again, like I said, it could be a fence, it could be anything, a pathway, anything that you have in there. Um, the focal point is, again, what draws your attention. As soon as you look at the garden, that thing that draws your attention to it, that would be your focal point. Uh, the third thing to pay attention to is plant positioning. So when you are positioning plants, Usually, you want to position them uh, like the tall. You want to position them the tallest in the back and the shortest in the front, so that you can see all the different layers of plants and uh, the the leaf structures and the colors. And uh, you don't want plants to be hindering your vision from seeing what's behind them, unless you are trying to create a sense of mystery and we will be talking about that a little bit later also, um, which is one thing that I'm, I'm going to be implementing in my garden. Also, there are many different types of gardens. There's, um, uh, there are the formal gardens, the cottage gardens, and just all sorts, all sorts of gardens. And sometimes you see in the formal gardens, you might see um, like uh, they would have um, hedges, whether of, uh, they're made of um, boxwoods or any types of evergreens um, or maybe hollies and those hedges sometimes can be tall and, and if they're a wide area sometimes the plants on the inside can be a little shorter. Um, now it's nicer to have them a little taller so that you can see them from a distance but if you have the plants a little shorter it kind of forces you to go to that area so that you would be um, so that you would want to see what's in that <laughs> what's inside that uh, boxed area or whatever shape it is in like uh, it could be um, circular or whatever it is but I also uh, like the way how sometimes the flowers kind of overflow over the boxwood hedges and create this sense of uh, uh, sometimes they have like an ethereal sense or abundance sense, you know, uh, just uh, many different ways of designing a garden. So just uh, pick your style, choose what you like and go with that. In the cottage garden, uh, most of the time, like you notice that uh, they don't pay attention to plant heights and it's kind of uh, almost haphazard, <laughs> um, but it's beautiful. It it's just um, has a sense of like a natural type of garden that sort of grew on its own but it is purposefully planted in that way to make it look beautiful in that natural sense. Also your plant can again be a part of the focal point so you might choose a uh, really tall grass or a tree that you would plant things around it and maybe you can make that tree into a bonsai and um, uh, again plant things under it and around it. The fourth thing to pay attention to is leaf structure. So in the garden as you are planting your flower bed you are going to have plants that have fine leaves uh, for example like uh, that could be uh, ferns or anything with a really like soft leaf like maybe yarrow um, and then you have plants with bold leaves I'm out of breath. <laughs> uh, that would have uh, really big, bold leaves or plants that have kind of like jagged 
leaves and uh, um, just many different kinds of texture in the leaves themselves and you want to have that different variation and you want to kind of mix them in you have the grassy texture and all these you want to mix them in so that not everything is just uh, kind of blending in and creating this blob <laughs> of uh, of plants unless you are trying to make like a monochromatic is that the right way to see it uh, to say it monochromatic scene like sort of like a just a, a field that's just filled with the same kind of plant and that can also be very beautiful and striking when you have like this garden that's just filled with the same type of plant um, but when you are mix intermixing different plants together I think it is important to look at these things uh, now sometimes I see gardens where they have just the same plant but with different colors uh, and they create this these patterns in the garden and I'm, that's also beautiful so again choose what you're going after and um, try it you might like it you might not if you don't that's okay you can change it you don't have to stick with it <laughs> uh, and then the fifth um, point is color um, so I you don't again so when you are choosing color color I think is um, can be very different from one person to another and for me I like cool colors and I don't normally tend to go to the hot colors although my husband likes them so I try to have them in some areas in our garden um, and you know they, they can be beautiful when used properly and I'm not saying that they're not but <laughs> I personally don't prefer them but when you choose colors, try not to go overboard and have all the colors of the world in one garden. Unless you create a, like a rainbow garden, that would be cool. Um, with like when, you're, when you have a rainbow in the garden, literally. Um, so try to choose no more than five colors. For example, the colors that I'm going uh, for in the blooms um, are... Um, would, white, purple, pink, yellow, and like a peachy orange color. Um, those are my favorite colors in the garden. Other than blooms, you want to be looking for leaf colors because your flowers are not going to be blooming all season long. Now you want to make sure that you have blooms, quote unquote, all season long, uh, but if they're perennials, they're most likely not gonna be blooming right, all the season. So we'll talk a little more about that. In, in a little bit but uh, you want to choose um, your leaf colors uh, to be a little to have also a very a variation so that your garden would always look beautiful you know, whether you have flowers or not and in, in um, all seasons you want to consider uh, winter spring summer and fall you want to consider all these different seasons when you are designing the garden and the colors that Typically, you want in a flower bed would be blue, yellow, green, uh, or a reddish purple color or purple color, red or purple, slash. <laughs> um, so, um, also, you want to have evergreens in the garden because, again, you want that um, seasonal um, look for your flower bed so you want that structure to be there again from evergreens and structures in the garden and focal points i think those are very important things to look at when you are designing your flower bed um, and you want to have um, some color in the winter like uh, maybe um, an evergreen bush or an evergreen tree or something that would um, draw your attention to when you're looking at it or maybe a uh, dogwood with a you know with a, a red or yellow stems that they could have um, so try to pick something that is going to provide some color for you during the winter and also structure as well so those could be different th different things they don't have to be the same thing one and the same or they could be also and uh, you can plant multiple of them or uh, to just kind of uh, give you that feel that it, the garden is not empty because a, a lot of the perennials would uh, die back to the ground in the winter and you don't really see 
a home. Much of them, unless they're a grass that uh, has the ability to stand up in the winter up against snow and all these things if you live in a cold environment. So in the garden that I'm designing, I am going to be putting um, about three evergreens on the inside and two evergreens flanking uh, the uh, the garden, the apiary on each side of the apiary. I might add some more in the future. I don't know, depending on how we're going to be opening the gate and such. I don't want it to kind of hinder us from opening the gate and smushing the bush. <laughs> that is not what I'm going for. So uh, the sixth thing you want to be looking for is uh, to create a sense of mystery in the garden. And um, again, I was telling you guys that this is what I think I want to go for in the garden and so the way how I'm going to implement this but I ha before I, I continue uh, and uh, uh, with my idea I just want to let you know that I'm by no means a garden designer or a landscape designer but this is what I love to do and I'm sharing I'm only sharing with you what I love to do and what I um, think is good to do. <laughs> I'm just simply sharing with you uh, what I um, think would make a garden look beautiful and from the things that I've learned over the years. And creating a sense of mystery in my area in the apiary, um, I would like to have some tall plants around the... My baby's waking up. <laughs> Gotta grab her. <laughs> so I would like to uh, have uh, some tall plants around the bird bath and um, maybe like a pathway around it to kind of create um, to lead us to walk behind that area and where you can't see behind um, those tall plants maybe they would be like ostrich ferns or uh, maybe elephant ears or whatever I end up putting in there. Uh, something tall that kind of blocks your vision and forces you to go down that path so that you would see what's on the other side. And that path is going to draw your eye and lead you in that direction. So that's sort of a sense of mystery. And for you can, there are many ideas that you could do. You could maybe like uh, put some uh, evergreen um, tall and narrow trees um, or maybe you could do some hollies or boxwoods or maybe just tall plants in general that kind of force you to go around but the beauty of having um, I guess something that's evergreen is that it would stay there the whole year but um, I personally don't think that's gonna be my choice because I am going to have evergreens other evergreens in that area that will stay all year round um, but again sense of mystery is one thing that you want to be uh, that you want to have in the garden because it just creates this nice <laughs> feeling that leads you into the garden and forces you to <laughs> to look more and to want to discover more in the garden so the seventh thing that you want to um, include in the garden or to uh, be looking for in the garden is uh, the feel of your garden. How do you want your your garden to feel? Do you want it to give you a sense of peace? Uh, do you want it to be calming, exciting, um, inspiring? Or do you want it to be a place where you can just sit down and observe nature? Maybe um, look at the birds and butterflies like it's going to be for me. Um, so these are all things that you want to think about also when you're designing your garden. What do you want it to feel like? Think about those things and try to think how your garden uh, would look like with the plants that you have chosen and um, all these, all the things that you have decided on. And the eighth thing that you might want to include in your garden is a sense of surprise or also um, uh, like a whimsical thing in the garden. It could be uh, something that would spark interest and um, or it could be just something that's funny or in inspiring like maybe a um, uh, like a, a, a whimsical sort of uh, birdhouse or 
uh, maybe a funny statue or um, or like maybe or maybe a piece of wood that has been carved in a really interesting way um, or anything like that like that that could bring that just a sense of in interest or um, brings joy or just uh, um, you know something that's different that's not going to be in everyone's garden and you want your garden to be your garden you don't want it to look like everyone's garden you want it to feel the way how you want it to feel and to look the way how you want it to look like because you we are all unique people and um, you might not enjoy <laughs> you might like someone else's garden but you might not personally enjoy being in it unless you are really inspired by it and you want to go for that feel. If you need more design help such as understanding your space, soil and sunlight, um, how to choose the best plants for your space, what things to pay attention to when choosing plants, how to create a model design for your space and much more, click on this video over here and uh, uh, go ahead and watch it. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching and I'll see you again next time. I feel like I'm forgetting something.